Traders, a short recap of my trading session today. I am done. This is Friday. I feel like I should uh, take off for the weekend and <laughs> possibly as early as I could. So as you can see here, I've got uh, two winners, which are actually three winners because I had two trades in Lulu, uh, one in OKE and one losing trade in Win. So I'm going to finish up over four grand. I've got another $400 uh, dollars open or so. Uh, in my open trade so that's just over four thousand dollars now I want to start by explaining what was my mental situation coming into trading today and that's quite important to understand because you can see that I actually have three winners one loser and normally on a day like this I should have my profit should be higher than what it is today the reason for that is quite simple. I had an amazing week. Until now, I'm up at around $110,000 without this day. So I'm close to $110,000 for the week. This looks like an amazing uh, coronavirus week, uh, which wasn't really a coronavirus week. We did have a volatile week. I mean, it was an amazing week for me. I had all green days. Everything just worked my way and the way I came into trading today, frightened, seriously frightened. I was like thinking, should I participate today in trading or not? I was definitely thinking, well, I'm going to pay back something today. Well, in fact, I came back yesterday with the same feeling and still made 20 something thousand dollars. But you know what? The way I felt today was like I'm invincible, but I knew on the other hand that while I feel I feel so invincible, like I had a great week, this is very, very dangerous feeling. So if you feel like you're doing too well, and I'm certainly feeling like I'm doing too well, is something that you need to take care of. And the only way to take care of is not increasing size because you feel like you're invincible and you love the way you trade and you think you're such a great trader, is in fact reducing size. Whenever you're doing well, you should reduce size. The other hand, if you're losing money, you should do the same. So in both extreme cases, you're mentally not stable. I did not start my day mentally stable. I started my day very unstable. So I reduced my size. So I've got three winners, one loser. I'm okay with $4,000. I mean, some people work for that uh, a month, right? I only worked one hour. So I'm having a great week and I just want to discuss now so you understand why my, I mean, I had some great trades. So I just wanted you to understand why my account does not look much higher than it probably should have been. So let's take a look at two trades I had today. Uh, first one was OKE, a very classic gap and go trade. Stock started down more than 4%, tried to move higher, failed. I was looking to short it under 33.70. Why 70? Because it bounced out of 70 several times. Initially, I posted 65, but then I corrected it. Why? Because 70 looked like the point of support. It had support. There was one big buyer at 70. If you look back at the level two, you can see that there was a big buyer at 70. So it moved higher. You expect a stock that is gapping down more than 4% to fail moving higher. So you're looking for the failure. And then once it comes down, you're looking for the short opportunity. But you don't just short. Because if you just short without any technical ideas, nothing there, then, I mean, your chance is to success, still is to succeed. But, you know, you just never know what's coming next. And then what happened? Look at this huge spike up. We were not short the stock by that time. It did not come down under 33.70. You could have seen the support. That's why you've got level two to watch how many buyers you've got on 33.70. And then it spiked up like crazy. So should it continue moving higher? Sometimes they do. Most of the time they don't. Please remember, this stock is down more than 4%. Institutional traders are probably not trading it today. People are more fear than greedy when they see stock down 4%. So you look again for an opportunity to short. And this time it came right over here, 33.90. And then I wanted to make a little bit more sure about this. So I posted it at 33.85 for a short. 
So you look for a failure and the failure was quite clear here. Look, it's consolidating here. It does not look like it wants to continue higher. It's a good candidate for a gap and go, meaning gap down and go like it did. And then you short it at 80. But then again comes once more the support at 70. If you've got yourself another support at 70 and you could see the same buyer again. If you've got the same support at 70, that's a perfect place to add for your short. You should be adding to your short at that point because you could have seen the earlier support, which was clearly now here. And once it comes under, it just came down and tanked down. And look at that huge downside move. It moved all the way to 33.26. So that's another almost 45 cents right after the 70 mark. That was a huge breakdown. So that worked out as well. So, you know, when you've got a nice trade, and you're working on, you know, we, we talked about it yesterday in the Star Trader course, uh, you should be risking approximately 1% of how much you can lose, not your capital, how much you can lose on per trade. And some certain occasions when you've got yourself a good opportunity to add to a winning trade, not to average down on a losing trade. We also discussed that <laughs> plenty of, I mean, quite a long time yesterday uh, in the trading, in, in the Star Trader course. So when you do have this opportunity to add to a winning trade because you've got some extra advantage, then you add. And I doubled down on this trade right over there. And that, that's why OKE is my actually my best trade today. Lulu was two trades. So OKE just one trade. It was my best trade today with a double size. I mean, still double size small. I did not go all the way full. So anyway, OKE worked out fine. Now back to Lulu. Lulu's the same idea. Lulu started with a gap down. You expect it to come down. So our first trade, you know what? I can't even remember. was somewhere over here. It worked out fine. We took this one for the short. It worked out fine. That was my, my, my second winner trade. And then it changed direction. I had to put a stop. And then it continued higher. Look at how beautiful it came up and closed the gap. You know, stocks love to close gaps. Lulu did the same. But when a stock is trending higher and closing a gap, you usually should refer to it not as the trend of the stock, but as the only idea was moving up in order to close the gap. So the only reason Lulu moved up is to close the gap. So if it's trending higher, don't trust the trend. It moved up to close the gap. That's it. It could come down. Now, remember, the S&P, on the other hand, is up 2.4%. And when the S&P is up 2.4%, and Lulu is down, I don't know, it closed the gap. It was at zero, right? But then it came down a little bit more. You would expect that if the market would continue to come down, Lulu will fail. If the market would have continued to move higher, Lulu could have made it, it could have continued. But there's no trend. The fact that it moved up to close the gap means nothing. Now it will pick either moving up or moving down. So Lulu chose to move down. Why? The market was up 2.4%. Lulu was down like 0.5%. Look at this beautiful point where we went short again, 305. Look at that here. Just amazing came down, I'm still riding it. So Lulu short here was because of two reasons. And that has nothing to do with OKE now. Lulu short here was because of two reasons. First, it only came up to close the gap. Second, it was in red territory when the market was up 2.4%. And the third is my expectation of the market direction. And here's the market direction. So if you take a look at the S&P, the S&P came down two days ago. We started here, we came down. Before that, of course, we were picking all-time new highs, Nasdaq, Dow Jones, stuff like that. Uh, not the S&P. The S&P came down a little bit. It looked like it's under pressure. And then came yesterday. And you may remember yesterday, my game plan was waiting for the S&P to come down. I, I had some trouble with stock that moved up when the S&P came up a little bit. And then I was waiting for S&P to break down and I finally got the breakdown yesterday. And again, that was a gap and go. So the S&P gap down, you would expect it to gap and go. Why? Because it was a big gap down. But you also expect it first to move in the other direction, meaning you expect the buyers to bottom fish. So there were some bottom fishers and it moved higher and you would expect that. And I was waiting for this. 
I was hoping it's not going to be there, but I was waiting for this. And once it came in and started coming down, you may remember yesterday, I was all in in my shorts, several shorts. Uh, most of them worked out. I finished yesterday up $20,000 and the market continued to come down. So that was my game plan yesterday, a gap down and a continuation. Now, just yesterday, I was looking at YouTube and I was answering a question of one of our traders, one of the people who follows me, who said, yeah, but what happened? And then, then comes the question, but what happened today? I mean, isn't it the same thing? Like the S&P is gapping up. Don't you expect it to gap up and go? Well, not. Because there are several things that you need to notice. The reason it's gapping down, the reason it's gapping up. I mean, what's the overall situation of the S&P? I started my day today telling you guys, I do not trust the market to continue coming up. So, you know, you don't just blindly look at the gap up and you say, well, it should, technically speaking, come down first and then move higher. No, you don't do that. When, when you look at the market, you put everything together, like what the S&P is doing in the last few days. Um, how much did it get, how much did it move down yesterday? Like five or six percent? I can't remember. A gap up of 2.4 percent. It's a huge gap up usually, but it's just a third approximately of what happened of, of the gap down yesterday, maybe half of what happened yesterday. So put everything together. It's not just the S&P gapping up. I did expect the S&P to I did not expect it to get up, I actually expected it to come down, but I was surprised like pre-market time, oh my God, it's getting up 2 point something percent. And the first thing I said when we came up today, I said, I don't trust it. So my game plan was again to go short. I did not want to go along. And there's plenty of stocks that you guys pointed out, oh my God, win now is... <laughs> It's coming down. There's plenty of stocks which look great. And all the time I was just spending my time telling you guys, don't go long, don't go long, don't go long. If the market is going to come down, like look at how it's doing right now. When, when it rains, everybody gets wet. So just take a look at everything. Take a look at every stock that looks to you like it's going to move higher. It's coming down with the market. You're not supposed to go long when the market's coming down. Because that's the direction of these institutional traders, that's the direction of everybody, everybody's coming down, everybody's selling, everybody's shorting. You're not supposed to be going in the contrary direction. You're just not supposed to be doing so. So if you come up with an idea, if you come up with a game plan, you play the plan. No matter how much it costs you, sometimes you lose money, but if you've got a plan, go with the plan. My plan was to short something. Well, I was very cautious today because I had a great week. Maybe if I didn't have such a great week, I would probably spend a little bit more money today, uh, risk more money today. So my only candidate was really Lulu. Why? Because Lily, Lulu just moved up, closed the gap. It's not likely to continue. The market, I expected to come down. It didn't really come down at the point where I shorted Lulu. You remember that? It came down later, but I was shorting Lulu because it was red, because I didn't expect it to continue higher, because I was expecting the market to come down and finally it did and helped me with the Lulu trade. So again, have a plan. Come in with a plan. If you have some mental situations like I did have today, work your size accordingly. Choose the stocks that are you know, consistent with your trading strategy, with, your, with your, the way you trade. And that's really the way to make money in the market. Isn't it simple? Very simple. If you're very experienced, very hard, if you're just starting out, I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you guys that it is as simple as maybe I've just, uh, uh, I just mentioned. But, uh, you know, guys, uh, this is tough work becoming a trader. And um, <laughs> it's my job to tell you that. Anyway, uh, have a great weekend. I'll see you all uh, next week. Um, I'm terribly sorry about today. I don't know if Scott made the announcement, but I'm not going to be able to attend the Star Trader course today. So we, uh, uh, my part in today is not going to happen today. We're going to do that on Monday, uh, same time on Monday, 3.15. Uh, extremely sorry, something came up. Uh, but anyway, have a great weekend. Hope you had a good week too. And I'll see you all next week. Bye, traders. Thank you for watching our video. The material was taken from The Market Whisperer, my Amazon best-selling book. This essential guide to stock trading is ideal for those with no background or experience in stock trading. 
Click here to read the 200 page part one of this book absolutely free. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.